This week, I'm going to be breaking down this Blender project that aired to over 10 million people. I'm going to be showing you how I made a one-to-one -one scale of New York City, how to make the globe, some precise camera animation, and an insane rendering hug. Let's go. Now from New York, we head back out west, about 2,500 miles to Las Vegas for more music. Gronk, we're coming at you. Take it away, buddy. Thanks, guys. So that happened. Happy New Year. That feels that that feels insane to me. Yeah, this is Blender, broadcast to millions of people on the world stage. So they just wanted a location transition and they had no brand guidelines. So my mind was blank. This is a project that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I don't know what to make. A few days go by. I decide, okay, I'm going to pray about this because I, I just can't, can't put anything to paper. And there's the idea I got. I realised I could get some state lines to get some kind of wireframey vibe. Use the waterfall crystals of the ball drop to create this locator device. And they really liked this. They were like, oh, this is really cool. It was really quick to mock it up in After Effects and then took it into Blender. I made the city. They were pretty happy with that. Then I made the earth. They were like, yep, this is, this is great. Thank you. Nice. So I just had to refine what I'd already come up with, which is amazing. Globes are great because they're just spheres. It's just textures and then lighting. Here is the viewport of what's happening. So this is the move from New York to London. Using a camera path, you can get absolute control as to where your camera is going. So the camera path is just a Bezier curve. That allows me so much control with where the camera is going instead of just guessing with keyframes and like graph editor, like, no. Nah. You want to be able to set the path of the camera and then use the graph editor to control the speed of the camera along that path. That gives you way more control. Couple that with a camera target. So having the camera target is really important because you can choose where the camera is looking, right? You can control that and animate that independently from the camera. So before we went to London, I wanted it to show all of USA first. Just, just a big hover on USA and then it flies out. So the good thing about making Earth is that the textures already exist online in the public domain. You can grab really high resolution textures. I needed the specular because that's the black and white map, the night map, so you see the lights, and I needed the displacement map. I use the displacement to give the Earth detail when you're close, and then all the reflections on all those little ridges and valleys and mountains and stuff. And to get that working, I just had to make sure my Earth was subdivided enough. That's why the Earth is this subdivided, and then it's got a modifier on it, so that there's enough geometry for the displacement map to actually push and pull things up and down. One of the most important things were the night maps, because that's the city lights of the world. That's one of the key aspects of this whole thing. So I found some really, really high res night maps, and I was able to place them here, and then I was shining a noise texture through them. I'm just animating that noise. Because there's no brand guidelines, I just thought, how can we just turn up the celebration? That's flashing lights, multicolors, celebration, right? So the water is just a wave texture, and it's got a lower roughness, and that's all using the specular map. So the specular map is black and white, right? So land is black, sea is white. So that gave me a mask for putting a ripple on the sea and making the land a bit more rough. Then the little secret source added onto this was the clouds. Once again, it's just an image, like really high res image, but I wanted that translucence. I saw tutorials about people using cloud volumes and you can get this awesome volumes with displacement maps of clouds, but that sounded really expensive on render time. So I decided to use glass. So I just put the clouds on a glass material and the clouds were just the alpha layer and then the glass itself was just a rough frosted glass kind of feel. And that was really nice because you get this secondary layer of the city light hitting through the clouds. And then I used a Fresnel so that you don't see the clouds at the edge of the earth so that you don't get this extra little layer popping off the earth, popping off the surface. All right, so these light shafts, these are just geometry. A little simple shape with nothing at the top and then I've got this gradient going across it of emission mixed with some noise. So I just looked up a tutorial on how to do light shafts without using volumes. This is a free HDRI from this add-on called Blender Kit and this is like user generated stuff and I was looking through looking through and I found this nebula and that really that really carried this. It had these beautiful colors and stars of different sizes and awesome gradients everywhere. See how clutch the HDRI came in because look this is the default HDRI and look at the effect it has. I just changed this to anything else and it completely changes how the globe looks. So that HDRI of space that really made the project shine. This is the city. 30 million polygons. It was higher 
and I had to optimize it to get it down. This is one-to-one -one New York City, 450 square miles. No poly, of course. Everything is really primitive, but it's one-to-one. -one. This was heavy. This was a heavy scene. Blender would crash a few times. First, I looked on TurboSquid and other like model sites, and they didn't really have any good models of New York. They weren't affordable and they weren't complete. They were just not fitting the bill. No one's going to have a model like this. This is a bit nuts. The way I built this was using Blender GIS, which is a free add-on where you can just grab any part of your city you can see the tiles I had to get these in tiles and there's I think there were about 12 tiles that I got in total and each tile took about 10 to 15 minutes I think and once I had them I was able to build this big expansive city and then I had to carefully position the camera that you wouldn't see the edges too much now I've got the buildings because it's nighttime everything's lit up and what better way to light everything up than highlight all the buildings so I just thought I'll just slap a wireframe modifier on there and that did it I mean that was enough and it was because I showed a previous project where I used wireframes in my buildings and they said yeah that looks really good and so yeah done then it was a case of the roads because I wanted the roads to light up quite a bit because I wanted it to be like the city is awake and alive when the roads come in that you are just given curves this is what you're given it's just curves so you have to extrude them so initially I put these through geometry nodes. I made them all tubes. That made the poly count go really crazy and that slowed the scene down quite a lot. And in the end, I just extruded it like you see here. I didn't think of this initially. This was something I thought of at the very end during the optimization phase. I'm trying to do everything I can to keep the poly count low. So I combined all the tiles and then I merged by distance. I merged all the overlapping polys because there were like buildings duplicated a few times. There were a few blocks that would overlap just because I didn't want to miss any city areas. And you don't know exactly where the cutoffs are when you do the like that map capture, that satellite capture in Blender GIS. So I did that, merged them all together. These are the light beams all over the city. This is geonodes and you can see how they're all rotating but they're a bit off axis so they're just a little bit you know like twirling around with a bit of an axis on them. They're all pulsating as well and this just really added that final level of polish just to add to the life of the city. This is a ball drop that I made in another project. This is just a little geonodes exercise. You can see it animates with the colors. I found a way to do this, just a noise texture, setting the UVs to random, random normals or something, so that every face would get a different kind of treatment. Looks just like it. I made this early on when I couldn't think of what to make. I was like, well, I've got the model now, so I might as well just throw it in as a, as a little Easter egg. The camera move, once again, it's a camera path. So I was able to sweep over Times Square and then find a route up. Very simple, just tweaking these little points you can just change where the camera goes and then camera target that stayed on Times Square I believe did this move no it didn't I can do this and then the camera path can be there and now it's going to be looking there the whole time so for render times the globe was about 30 seconds of frame which is amazing I mean look how far we've come that we can do stuff like this for 30 seconds of frame insane so in America broadcast is 720p 720p 59.94 so I was like this is, this is gonna be fine so at 720p it was 30 seconds of frame what I found really interesting is the city was taking ages to render on Eevee. I'll show you. Look at this. Everything is lit up. You don't really need shadows, okay? If I turn on shadows, I turn on shadows. Okay, you see that? A bit of shadow there. You see some shadow here on the floor. Yeah, it looks, it looks nice. You got some shadows here, but really, you don't really see that much. And the render times are three minutes per frame with shadows on. I turn off the shadows. Can you tell a difference? In motion, you won't be able to tell the difference. You don't get much. I had to turn off shadows and it got down to like 10 seconds of frame. So with shadows, about three minutes. And without shadows, 10 seconds. Easy decision that was. The only thing I did to it in After Effects was add hue, curves, some optics compensation just to get the transition. And I added a subtle hue shift because this is a bit yellow to me. And like the colors that come out from just this subtle hue shift just really made it feel like vintage vibe. It was more of an incandescent hue. Maybe it's just a teal and orange thing, but that's all it needed in After Effects. So it was really quite simple. It wasn't that advanced a project, but it looked good. This is the thing with 3D, right? If you know what you're doing, you can get the lighting right quite quickly and the model doesn't have to be that advanced. And then it's just a case of placing the camera. And if you know how to animate a camera, then you can get some really good payoff. And that's something you build with time and experience. It really becomes a playground. Can I just say, EV is so good now with this recent uh, ray tracing update it got. Because you get these reflections. You can, can you see that? Like that is actually a value add. You get these reflections from emissive materials and it's really quick. It's like real time. And I used this for another project back in the summer and 
that really helped because that was just not happening with cycles. It was just taking too long and I used EV for that with ray tracing. That came in so clutch because that was rendering about three seconds a frame. So this is the state of the industry now, which is just crazy if you think about maybe 10 years ago, it was minutes and minutes and like denoising just came out and that wasn't even used properly at the industry level. We rely on denoises because of how far it's come. It's so, so powerful. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see if I can answer them, but that's how I made this. That's how this happened. Across the island, leading our celebration there is actress, singer, and former Miss Universe, Dianara Torres. Dianara, what's ahead there? <laughs>